Hello and welcome to my channel eMechanic in today's video I will be showing you how to rebuild for Transit Mark 7 and A2.2 TDC engine. The first step is to insert the main bearing shells to the engine block. This is where the crankshaft will sit. The bearing with the hole and groove will sit on the engine block and the other goes once the crankshaft is fitted. In this step you don't need to lubricate the bearing as you need to make sure that they sit comfortably. Next step is to lubricate the bearings and then insert the crankshaft. The crankshaft gear goes to the front of the block and the flywheel flange to the back. Once you fit the crankshaft make sure it turns smoothly. Lubricate the crankshaft or passage in the journals then fit the lower bearing shell to the cap. Start to tighten the bearing cap with your hands before using a torque wrench and a 15mm socket. When installing the cap, make sure that the R on the bearing cap is facing towards the front of the block, facing the gears. Using a torque wrench, start to tighten the bolt using the manufacturer's torque specification. Now it's time for the pistons. Piston consists of three rings as shown. First install the oil ring as shown. The oil ring is responsible for most of the oil control, helping to make sure the right amount of oil is used to lubricate the working surfaces of the cylinder. When installing the middle and top ring, you need to make sure you place the ring on the correct side. It should right top on the rings. The middle ring helps with both functions, playing a finishing role in the combustion sealing as well as the downward oil scraping. Do the same to the top ring. The primary role of the top compression ring is to seal off the majority of the combustion gases to ensure you get the maximum power output from your engine. When installing the piston, place the piston rings offset to 120 degrees. Now it's time to put the big and bearing shells. Upper bearing shells goes on the rod and the lower bearing shell to the rod cap. Now it's time to put the pistons. Good. Yeah, we're good. Lubricate the piston rings, connecting rods and the engine cylinder, and then compress the piston ring to the piston using piston ring compressor. When installing the piston, place the piston rings offset to 120 degrees. This is done so that the piston seals to the compression and exhaust strokes and there is not a clear path for blow-by of gas made by linearly lined in gaps and also to prevent blow-by of gas past the rings which would both pressurize the oil sump and contaminate the engine oil. Slightly hit the piston to place the piston to the engine block using a piston hammer or the wooden part of a hammer. <laughs> 
now it's time to marry the piston to the crankshaft, making sure the R on the rod cap is facing the bearing or the front of the block. Make sure you lubricate the crankshaft and the rod cap. I am then tightening them first by hand and then tightening it with a wrench using a pull socket as I'm checking if the crankshaft is moving freely before I use a wrench. Once you tighten the pistons, it's time to put the sump spacer. Before installing the spacer, you need to silicone the block using silicone gasket. Make sure you use silicone which is both water and oil proof and can withstand at least 250 degrees Celsius so that there is no oil escape. There are 21, 10 bolts, 6 big bolts that sits on the back of the block. This is where the gearbox will sit. I'm using air gun set at medium speed so that the space of one crack is its own and space it. Now it's time to put the oil pump. You first need to put the chain to the crankshaft first gear. Next place the oil pump using for a millimeter ball, but don't tighten it yet as you need to place the tensioner. Place the tensioner to its slot. There is no screw, only a pin in which you need to remove once you fit the tensioner to tighten the chain. Once you put the tensioner, you can now tighten the bolts. <laughs> Place the pump's pickup pipe using two eighths and millimeter bolts. Now it's time to close the bottom end. Once again, silicone the sump spacer using silicone gasket. You also need to use the sump gasket, but I use both for extra strength. Tighten the sump using 8mm bolt. Stay tuned for part 2 as I will be installing the cylinder head, timing chain, and closing the engine. <laughs> 